Hi there, I'm Sam, and you're listening to the My Modern Met Top Artist Podcast. If you're listening to this show, you probably love art and you believe in the power of design. We at My Modern Met certainly feel that way, and that's why we were really interested in this next story. In 2018, American journalist Evan Townsend designed True South, a flag for the continent of Antarctica. Art and design often have unseen impacts on the world around us, and the design of the True South flag is the perfect example of a design impact story. Antarctica is a place you more than likely have never been, and you will likely never go to. True South acts as an important tool to get people to care about Antarctica and the stewardship of the continent. It's also, quite simply, a beautiful flag. Evan will describe the flag for you in just a bit, but if you're more of a visual learner, you can find it on our Instagram at Top Artist Podcast, or just type in True South Flag into your web browser to find a picture. This episode will be a bit different from our normal episodes. It's our first show featuring more than one guest at a time, and none of these guests consider themselves primarily artists. We have a journalist, a scientist, and researcher working in Antarctica, and a vexillologist slash vexillographer or flag expert slash flag designer. But I'll let these guys introduce themselves and the True South flag now. So I'm Evan Townsend. Um, I am the designer of the True South flag. Uh, my name is uh, Juan Celas Marisant, and I um, uh, work in Antarctica. I work for the University of Madison, Wisconsin, as a research assistant in astrophysics. And I've been working in Antarctica two years now, so in uh, so two times a winter over on the French station uh, and on the French and Italian station. And I'm Michael Green. I'm the founder of Flags for Good, uh, which is a flag company, but um, I'm also just a vexillologist, a, a flag nerd, a giant flag nerd. And uh, that's how I met Evan and uh, just really been a part of the True South story just because I'm, you know, printing them and helping Evan put them out into the world. I think that all of you really represent some amazing parts of True South and what had to happen to kind of get it started. But maybe one obvious question to start with is what exactly is True South? So True South is a flag for Antarctica. Um, and it, it's a flag for the continent itself, but uh, just as importantly, it's a flag for the community of, of people who care about Antarctica all across the world. Since we are an audio-based show, can you describe for our listeners, if they haven't looked it up on our Instagram or on our Facebook yet, what does True South look like? Sure, I'd be happy to. Um, so True South is uh, a flag, so it's a three by five rectangle. And it's divided into two horizontal stripes. The top half is navy and the bottom half is white. And then in the center of the flag, there's a diamond and it's it's what's called counterchange. So the top half is white against the navy stripe and the bottom half is navy against the white stripe. And the diamond is sort of bisected with a V and it creates this image of a white peak on the top and a compass arrow pointing south on the bottom. I don't know much about flags, but the design of this flag seems so beautiful to me, and it seems like such a good design. But maybe this is a good time to ask Michael, who is our vexillologist or flag expert, like, why is this a good design? Like, are there flag rules that it follows that makes it so pleasing to look at? There are quite a few flag rules. Uh, And yes, True South is a beautifully designed flag. And uh, it's one that I think is successful, A, yeah, sure, because it follows the flag rules, sure. But I think it actually um, is unique in a, in a vexillological way, because usually white is at the top, and it's more of like white is used to draw the eye, whereas I think this flag, it's inverted in a lot of ways. The, the white is on the bottom, but I think obviously the symbolism behind that, like the Antarctic continent and then the dark sky above it, uh, and then the white sort of exploding out of it like a mountain. It's so easy to understand when you first see it. And very few flag designs are one of those like 
oh yeah, duh, I know what that is. Or of course that should be the flag of that country. Why isn't it the flag of that country already? You know, that was the first thought I had when I saw True South was just like, let's just stop right now. Let's just make this the flag for Antarctica and move on. <laughs> you know, like this is, it's, it's obvious. There's a beautiful, almost Betsy Ross-esque story surrounding the creation of this flag. It was made from scraps of tent and spare pieces of cloth laying around when Evan was in Antarctica. I asked him to walk us through that creation story. I also asked him if it was important that True South was actually created on Antarctica. Is it important that it was created in Antarctica? I think it's the first flag for the first proposal for the flag that was created on the continent, right? Yeah, as far as I'm aware, that's right. The flag actually came out of another flag. I was in Antarctica during the Antarctic winter of 2018, and we flew a pride flag down there, and it ended up getting a lot of attention internationally, and and people started reaching out to me and, and saying that it meant a lot to see the flag. And like Michael, I'm also a vexillologist or I should say flag enthusiast. Um, right. <laughs> I've always found them interesting, but that was that was a moment where I felt very personally the power of flags because I was in the middle of, of nowhere, the end of the earth, and I felt like I was a part of this global community. So that's really what inspired the flag for Antarctica because there was no flag like that, I felt, um, where I could fly it and, and feel like people across the world would understand what, this continent meant to me. And to your to your other question, so I I do think that it's important in terms of maybe some perceived authenticity uh, that this flag was made in Antarctica. But one of the things that I hope the flag does is sort of change the script a bit about who is and isn't a part of the Antarctic community. You know, that has been a pretty high bar. Um, there are a lot of barriers to sort of entering that traditionally. And I think one of those barriers is having been to the continent. And it's so few people have ever actually done that. So, so actually, I don't think it's as important that it was made in Antarctica. Um, I think it's more important that it's coming from the Antarctic community and it's made and promoted with the best intentions of the continent in mind. It's the new year and we're all making resolutions. Hopefully, if you're like me, you're also resolving to make yourself and your well-being a priority in 2022. BetterHelp is a great way to invest in some self-help. They provide online personalized counseling that you can do from the safety of home. No more uncomfortable waiting rooms, and it's even more affordable than traditional counseling. As a new mom, BetterHelp is a lifesaver for me. Between juggling family and work, having someone to talk to is key. And BetterHelp means that I can have some dedicated me time without having to leave the house. BetterHelp will assess your needs and set you up with your own licensed professional therapist. These are all licensed professional counselors with different areas of expertise. You'll be able to send a message to them at any time. And if you feel it isn't a match, BetterHelp makes it easy to switch at any time free of charge. So join me in investing in yourself this year and visit BetterHelp. It's convenient, professional, confidential, and affordable. If you don't believe me, just check out the testimonials posted daily on their site. As a listener, you'll get 10% off your first month by visiting our sponsor at betterhelp.com slash listener. Join over 1 million people who have taken charge of their mental health. Again, that's betterhelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash listener. It's amazing to think how a flag can open Antarctica up to the world and to quote Evan to change the script about who is and isn't a part of the Antarctic community. I was curious to learn what the people living and working there first thought about it and if they were eager to adopt it as their flag. There aren't a lot of flag enthusiasts in the world, so I don't think that there were as many people like Michael who looked at it and saw it from a a vexillologist standpoint. But I think that people in the Antarctic community really do feel this need for connection. And I think that's that's one of the reasons that the flag caught on pretty quickly is because people recognize that it's important to be able to to share your pride about Antarctica and to be able to, to feel like you're a part of a bigger community working to protect it. To my point of view, I uh, definitely agree. And uh, thanks to the flag, uh, I've met other people um, who spread the flag already in other bases, other stations. If you go to the French station, you will see the French flag flying, or you will see the flag of the French Southern and Antarctic lands. Uh, if you go to the French and Italian uh, station Concordia, you will see the French, the, uh, the Italian and the European uh, flag flying. 
but somehow um, we are on the Australian land or Australian claim. So uh, it's, you know, Antarctica is a continent for peace and research and uh, being together uh, borders doesn't exist because if tomorrow China wants to make a station on the French claim, it can. It just has to send a letter to France saying that I will do it. So somehow that flags um, destroy uh, imaginary borders and unite us. That's the way I saw it. And I was happy really to see it fly in different stations. I think I didn't understand how flags were important in that landscape until I saw some of the photos of True South. And I just saw there's so many flags, like every photo, it's this flag with all of the other countries represented. So it's imagery that you see all the time when you're working there. And I guess maybe you don't notice like, oh, there's not, there's not one flying for this continent. But speaking of those photos and all of that great imagery of all those flags, was there a moment when True South was put up somewhere that has like a really great story that you saw like, wow, this is really being adopted and it's part of this international story? There are definitely, I mean, every time I see a photo of, of True South posted on social media or, or sent to, to our email, it's, it's always incredible to see. And there have been a few moments like that, like Salas mentioned, just seeing like the Ecuadorian National Antarctic Program and the Czech National Antarctic Program, like both flying it at their bases. These are countries that are on opposite sides of the world, but can really demonstrate that common interest. Um, and I think that's really cool. But I think that one of the photos and, and one of the stories that has stuck with me over the course of the last year, which is really when this all started, is a photo that Michael took actually just of the flag flying outside his home in Texas. Um, and, and I'll explain why. I mean, this, so it it's a design, right? And when I created it, that's sort of all it was. What makes a flag a flag is the fact that it's a symbol of something and, and it communicates an idea. And when it was just sort of like sitting in my backpack or on my computer, it wasn't a symbol of much. And so that was the first time I saw somebody else using it to communicate the same ideas, but also to add their own meaning and experience to it. And every photo since has been the same thing, has been adding their own personal meaning and intention and really strengthening what this symbol is. But um, that picture will always be sort of the start of it for me. That's sweet. I didn't know that. But I, I think this is demonstrating one of the things that uh, fascinates me most about flags is that Flags are a perfect diving board to jump into so many topics. And I think what we're talking about right now is like, what is a nation? And Antarctica is a perfect example of that idea, as well as True South. It's like, down there, what does it mean to be a part of the French or the Czech or whatever? Because you're not in that, that place. And the people on the continent, no matter what base they're in, are more of a community than they are with their their home country. And so it, it's just sort of illustrating a much larger idea of what is a nation? What is a community? Does a community have to all be in the same place? You know, because when I'm flying true south outside of my house here in Texas, you know, yeah, I, I'm I'm trying to communicate that we need to conserve places that I've never even seen with my own eyes, but I know is important. And I know it's important to others and to our world. And so you know, there's a community that believes that and, and having a symbol is, is super important. If you look at, for example, um, Concordia Station, so you go there using um, New Zealanders' uh, flight first. Then after you take Canadian flight from uh, the Italian station, you arrive at Concordia Station, which is on the Australian claim. And that station has been built, if I don't say a mistake, I think it's by an English guy, the, the architect. And on the station, you have some French, you have some Italians, and you had also a Dutch, which the Dutch was under a French contract, and one French was under an Italian contract. So what it is to be a nation there, you're just a community together, working together with the same goal. And I think, to me, that's what the flag does represent. It's why I, I feel that the flag is part of my of. Uh, what we do in Antarctica. So Liz, I feel like you're doing such a great job of just describing the complexities about like how these places are related and 
Uh, one thing that you brought up before is the territorial claims and all of these things that entities have sort of unofficial claims of land, but really it doesn't mean anything. And I think that's really important to bring up because people have used flags to sort of authenticate those claims, right? So I, I just wonder, do you all sort of see that as the opposite intention of True South? Like those flags, do they symbolize uh, sort of these like very human sort of uh, missions of like trying to take a piece of this continent for themselves? Like, are they bad flags? Uh, and this is True South trying to remedy it. I know that's probably not the case, but how do you feel about these sort of alternative Antarctica-esque flags of other nations? I wouldn't say it's, uh, it's the opposite. I think it's just strengthen what they are doing. If you look at the nation there, they try to work together. It's hard to, to work together. It's not not always easy. I won't say that the French, the Italians are working perfectly together. <laughs> I would say uh, the idea is more to strengthen those links, to bring food to those um, the work that already has started. So, uh, of course, everybody wants a little bit of the bed sheets, <laughs> but uh, it's, uh, I wouldn't say it goes on the opposite. Yeah, I, I like that sentiment. You pointed out, Sam, correctly that a lot of times uh, flags are used to sort of bolster a, a sense of national pride. And I think, Celeste, you illustrated so well that Antarctica is a place full of complexities. But I'd like to think that at least part of what each of those territorial flags is representing is is still a care and a connection for Antarctica. Um, and what I hope True South represents is those common interests. So there may be some contention among the countries who have territorial claims down there, um, but True South, I, I hope, draws out the, the best intentions and the shared values of those other flags. Can you tell us about a time that you saw the impact of True South uh, working to unite people on that scale? Uh, I, I actually think Michael and Celeste are great examples of, of that impact that I, I've been seeing and I hope to continue to see from this flag. On the one hand, you, you have people like Celeste, uh, as he mentioned, uh, very involved with the French Antarctic program, was working at a French Antarctic station. So here's somebody who cares about Antarctica and is working closely with Antarctica. And, and I was also stationed in Antarctica, but we never crossed paths. And it was only through the flag that we were able to connect. And then on the other hand, you have someone like Michael who has who has the interest and, and has the ability to contribute to this conversation and to contribute to the stewardship of Antarctica. And, and it was through this flag that he's been able to, to join that conversation again. And so personally, I've, I've loved being able to make connections like that. And I've also seen connections like that being made across the, the world. I have that Russian friend from uh, Vostok Station. So you, you have to know that inside the continent, you have South Pole, Concordia Station and Vostok Station. So American, Russian and French Italian together. And uh, if you look at uh, that friend that I have from Russia, um, we have, he, he wintered at uh, Vostok Station. And that's one of the subjects we're talking sometimes about the flag. And I think he would say the same as I say that we have the same flag. And he's Russian. I'm French. <laughs> and we have the same flag. We have, one, of course, our Russian and French flag. But we also have our flag. And it, it doesn't have the same politics uh, on the region, so same lifestyle, everything. And we don't have the same background history of our countries, but we have the same flag. And that does mean a lot to us because we have somehow, through that flag, the same values that we want to carry. See, right there, what Sela said is why this story makes me so happy. A single design could be so powerful that it transcends national identity and political ideology to unite two people from different backgrounds with the same flag. That is beautiful. But it also made me wonder how vexillography could make that happen. Vexillography, if you remember, is the design of flags. True South united Salus, who is French, and his Russian colleague, through a different connection than the stuff that connects us to our countrymen, right? So I wanted to know if the flag rules changed when you're working on a project like True South. I asked our guest flag expert, Michael Green. So 
you're right that most flags, at least most flags that people can recognize are flags of nations, the ones that you see that represent a group of people. But I think lately, especially, you're seeing a lot more flags for activism. So when I started Flags for Good, it was out of a desire to help the Black Lives Matter movement. And because I was watching this rising movement and they were all sort of doing makeshift signs and and kind of just writing things on cardboard. Meanwhile, you have sort of the other side of the coin. A lot of the conservatives at the time had tons of flags. So I saw a need. There needs to be flags for things that I believe in. But to that point about activism, a lot of times you need words on flags for things that you need to sort of explain what you believe. Whether that's the person you're supporting for a political reason or sort of a phrase that you're trying to get recognized. True South kind of bridges the gap between a really well-designed national flag and an activism flag. Because there is that side of True South that is, hey, we need to recognize this continent's important. Hey, I know you've never been here, but... You should support the conservation of the Southern Ocean and the Antarctic continent because it's so often forgotten because it's, you know, not top of mind. Um, so rounding back out to your question, it, it does do both things. It's an activism flag that doesn't need the words on it to say, hey, support Antarctica and the Southern Ocean, because that would take up a lot of space. You know, it wouldn't be a very well-designed flag. But it also represents beautifully a a group of people with, I mean, some, one of the most simplest designs you could think of. Clearly, the design of True South was motivated by a profound love for Antarctica and a desire to protect it. Salus and Evan help us understand what the challenges facing the continent really are today. I ask how we can help as people who will probably never go to Antarctica ourselves. We have, I would say, different kind of challenges. Uh, I would say uh, climate change is one, uh, getting funding for science by uh, countries. Also, like having the possibility to talk a lot about the science we do there because science, it's fact, it's real. <laughs> and we see so much time, like so, so many times, like people saying that we really don't know what the, what they do there in Antarctica. We don't know everything. We hear a lot of conspiracy things about Antarctica. Uh, as continent. So sometimes it's really funny and it's difficult also to deconstruct them. So that's something that I try to work on. It. Antarctica is for everyone and it's for peace and science. For me, the science is also everyone's business. It's not only for one guy who has the money, one guy who has education. When you find a result, that knowledge is for everyone. So that's one big challenge I think not only Antarctica has today, but uh, many of the science community. I, I love your point about science for everyone, Silas. I think that's so important. And I think that's something that like we get to experience when we're down in Antarctica working at these stations because like even if we are not ourselves researchers, we're we're interacting with those experiments. And that's that's one of the reasons that I wanted to share that experience with others because it's it's so difficult to actually be in the room when that's happening, but it should be accessible. To your question though, Sam, I think to put it simply, Antarctica is facing a lot of the same issues that places around the world are facing. So rising temperatures, ocean acidification. There are places in Antarctica, as Salis alluded to, where temperatures are rising at five times the rate of the global average. But this flag is also not just meant to be a flag for Antarctica in isolation. Um, it's it's meant to bring Antarctica to those discussions and to those efforts. So anything that you can do to help combat the global climate crisis is also something that will help Antarctica. And I think just being conscious of that connection and Antarctica's place in the larger global system is, is really going to help. So uh, another question is, can people buy True South? Like if we want to support uh, Antarctica and, and the True South project in general, should we be buying True South flags from Flags for Good? And I know also, I think by doing so financially, you help support the cause, correct? Yeah, we are not the exclusive retailer of True South. Anybody can print it, draw it, uh, you know, paint it on the back of your car, whatever you'd like to do. But if you want a true, you know, a flag, we sell those. And then like everything at Flags for Good, we donate a portion of each 
uh, flag to a relevant charity. And so, yes, there a portion of your purchase goes directly to uh, research and conservation efforts in Antarctica and the Southern Ocean. And uh, we we love anytime we see a true South order come through, we know, hey, that's a special person. You know, they're you know they really want to fly this for a special reason. Now it's time for our listener submitted questions. If you are just joining the show, this is a portion of the podcast we call Ask the Artist. It's where we ask all of you to submit your own questions for our guests. If you want to check out if one of your favorite artists or designers will be coming on soon, check in with us on Instagram or Facebook at Top Artist Podcast, or go to our website to sign up for the newsletter. Let's jump into this week's Ask the Artist. So the first ask the artist is how do you start designing a flag and determining what is important? So maybe I'll start as the less experienced vexillographer and then Michael can tell us how it really happens. Um, (laughs) So like I said earlier, uh, with True South, it really was personal and and that's where it started for me. Um, I've had people ask like, hey, would you want to design a flag for this other thing? Um, And I, I think it would be fun and interesting to do, but I I think that because I had that connection with True South, that it was a much more successful design as a result. Yeah, I think that personal connection is really important. As I'm, for instance, redesigning a lot of U.S. state flags, I I really try to go to the state because I feel like you got to figure out what are those colors, what are those symbols. What resonates there? You know, I think that's another that's another reason why True South is so successful because Evan had that personal connection. But yeah, usually you start with color, you start with history, you go back and look at historical flags of that place or historical even heraldry, and uh, figure out those embedded symbols that you just gotta have. You know, you can't leave that off, otherwise it's not going to be successful. In your interview with My Modern Met, you mentioned that a big challenge for Antarctic conservation is getting people to care about a place they've never been and will likely never go to. What kind of strategies have been effective in connecting the outside world to this place? Yeah, that is a huge challenge. I mean, Antarctica doesn't have, you know, there's not really Antarctic cuisine. Um, And, you know, there are a lot of talented musicians and there's actually music and culture that is coming out of Antarctica, but that's not something that people really get to connect with. So a flag is especially valuable um, in this instance. And so that's something that I kind of understood just by seeing it happen. But since starting this, uh, we've been able to connect with people who understand it a little better. Um, One person in particular we talked to was Dr. Joanne Peck, who is studying marketing at the University of um, Wisconsin-Madison. And her and her team looked at this idea of the tragedy of the commons, which is what happens when you have a shared space that everybody owns, but nobody feels like they own it. And and so it sort of gets neglected. And that's certainly the case with Antarctica in a lot of instances. So something her team found was that when you develop a psychological ownership, a sense of ownership, that you can really imbue a sense of responsibility. And they saw remarkable changes of behavior just by changing the wording of a sign, for example. Um, And so that's one of the ways I think that this flag is working, is by building that connection to the continent and helping people feel more responsible and therefore acting on it. So you're telling me y'all don't eat penguins? (laughs) Uh, not anymore, but that certainly was the case. <laughs> no way. Yeah. One of the interesting things about Antarctica is because it's so cold, it's basically like a freezer. And so if you go to some of the like historic sites around the continent, um, you'll see the penguins that they ate because they haven't, um, they haven't deteriorated at all. <laughs> it's, it's a surreal experience. But no, that is not on the menu at any of our, our meals. I would think, I mean, they're so abundant. You don't have to fly them there. I mean, it <laughs> seems like a perfect, they're not endangered, are they? So there are some pretty serious threats against them. Um, there are some emperor penguin populations that have dropped by 50% because of the loss of the ice shelf. Um, they don't have the same nesting sites as they used to. All animals in Antarctica are protected by the Antarctic Treaty. So you're actually not allowed to get close enough to change their behavior unless you're one of the researchers working directly with them. Certainly not hunt and eat them. 
I can confirm that I worked on the king penguins colony. So we were tracking the the population and the, of the king penguin colony from the Crozet Islands, which is in the Antarctic island uh, near Antarctica. And what we discovered is that penguins, uh, since like ten years, something like this, are traveling more to get their food. And this is about the fact that the the Earth is warming, and so the f- polar front that is the imaginary border between Antarctica and the rest of the world, the Sea of Antarctica and the rest of the world, is pushing back to Antarctica. So the penguins on the island has to travel more to get the food to Antarctica and come back to the island after. So um, we're losing penguins. <laughs> and that's sad. I'm, I'm laughing a little bit, but no, it's really sad. Is there a favorite or notable collaboration in the creation of one of your Flags for Good flags? From when we started Flags for Good, uh, one of the biggest reasons we wanted to do it was to be able to give and give to charities and, and organizations that are just less trafficked, I guess. And so one of them that we found early on was the House of Gigi, which is a, a home for trans women in Arkansas. And since we're also in the South, we know how hard it is for the LGBT community here. And so um, that specific home was there to create sort of a, a community of activist-based uh, trans black women who, who are one of the most vulnerable populations of LGBT people around the world. And so um, anyway, we we picked a few of our flags to donate to the House of Gigi and have, I mean, we're only a year old and we've been able to donate tens of thousands of dollars to the House of Gigi. And, and now they actually have a physical home in Arkansas and we're going to go visit them here soon. It's that type of impact that really makes what we've done special. And I know uh, the money that we've given to, to Antarctic Conservation, I'm sure, is going and doing incredible things. And hopefully one day I'll get to go down there and, and see it as well and see the, the true impact of, you know, the simple act of purchasing a flag can really do. How can the average person make an impact in helping preserve Antarctica? It's, you know, everybody knows it's difficult to get there. It's a privilege, let's say. Let's be honest. Um, we go there because we're doing science and um, mostly is that. So if you look at whatever your you job there, you can be an electrician, logistics, supply, you could be directly a scientist on the field, having the, the head on the ice collecting some samples. But we're all there so it can function. So, it will, so we can do science and we can get more information about our planet or also about the universe because we also do astronomy there so it's a privilege to be there and we have to say say the word so it's difficult to get there so i wouldn't say so not about going there to do good things for antarctica if you want to do things and if you're not working in the science and if you don't have your opportunity to get there but you could share the information that the scientific world is from uh, is trying to share you could share so I would say share the information, but always, always double check. For me, the flag is also sharing the information because if you share the flag, you're also sharing what is Antarctica. Once I remember I was walking in the city uh, on my backpack, I have the flag. <laughs> of course, not everybody knows what the, that flag is in France. And someone stopped me uh, at supermarket and told me, what's, what's that? I said, that's the Antarctic flag. <laughs> Person was like, Antarctic flag. What is what, what? What for? What is it? So I wasn't able to talk to that person, and perhaps that person is going back home and is going to tell her husband or his husband, uh, saying that, "Oh, uh, I saw the flag of Antarctica today," <laughs> and talk about it. So that brings uh, a discussion, that brings some research after from that person to know what's what's Antarctica, where it is, um, what we do there. Could I ask a follow-up question just personally? Because I'm wanting to maybe visit Antarctica, but I wanted to know what y'all's idea, or at least thoughts are about Antarctic tourism. I know it's tough and I know I shouldn't say that <laughs> because I'm a privileged person because I work there. I've been there. I've been in many stations now. and But it has consequences. I think it has uh, ecological consequences. If I wouldn't be working there, I would not going there. Yeah, it, it's really hard for me to say don't go because I've obviously felt that draw as well. And uh, it's it's powerful. But I will say that it's always cheaper and more sustainable to, to explore the continent through books, through movies, through music uh, and art. 
And then, uh, Sam, actually, I wanted to respond to your, your last question about what, what people can do. The climate crisis is complex, and all of the threats facing Antarctica are, are complex. And there isn't one solution. And that can feel difficult and sometimes overwhelming. I think that any time we're going to move forward, we're going to need a whole box of tools. And that's sort of where this flag came in. It's not something that a lot of people are using for conservation. Um, but I think that it's going to take these sorts of approaches to really make a difference. So I'd say think about what your skill set is. Get creative because we need all the help we can get and we need it from all sides we can get. So whatever you can contribute. Those were just some of the great questions submitted for our guests from True South. Thank you to all of our listeners who took the time to send a message and to make our show better. If you want to ask a question in a later episode, don't forget you can also submit a voice message through our website. All right, we've spent a lot of time talking about True South's beginnings and the impact it is making now, but I wanted to spend some time talking about True South's future. I asked Evan, Salas, and Michael what exactly would have to happen for True South to become the official flag for Antarctica. So as we've alluded to throughout this conversation, Antarctic governance is incredibly complex, and there are a lot of uh, countries who are involved in the continent. And so it's unclear totally what it would mean to become official. There are several countries who already recognize True South as official. But in order for all the countries to recognize it as official, it would probably have to go through something like the United Nations or the Antarctic Treaty itself, which is sort of the governing apparatus that 54 countries are a part of. But really, again, the flag is about people, and it would be incredible to see this become even more official, and and that's something that I hope happens. But really the marker of success for me is if people are using this and and if it's making a difference. I think that's a great sort of transition to our last question that we ask all of our guests. You can all feel free to answer this, but it's what impact do you hope True South has on the world? Yeah. So for me, the big overarching goal of the whole project is to make a positive difference in the welfare of the continent. And that's like a pretty big goal, right? I I don't think that this flag is going to single-handedly enact global climate policy. I don't think it's going to reverse the loss of, of the ice shelves on the continent. But what I think it can do, and what I think it has been doing, is working on the individual level to make connections. And I think those connections are really what's going to make a difference because again this is a continent without a human population but it's it's humans are who are responsible for it and it's humans who are going to be making a difference in its future and i think these connections can be small um the conversations that are started are small but i think that it can build a momentum that will hopefully make that meaningful difference for the future of Antarctica. I think that's such a great response. The only thing we have left is we want to connect you to our listeners who are super excited about this and want to stay tuned in to what you're working on next. So where can we find you on social media? Where's the best place to find your work? Keep up with True South. So uh, we have an Instagram page and a Facebook page. Both are True South Flag and a website as well, truesouthflag.com. So we always love, again, making those connections and would be delighted to, to see pictures or, or to hear from any of your listeners. And if you want to know more, more about Antarctica, you can follow me on Instagram. So Celas, C-E-E-L-A-A-S. So you're going to see fun pictures and videos about the life at Paul. So on the geographic South Pole. And if you want more Flags for Good, we're just Flags for Good on basically everything, TikTok even, uh, if you're interested in flags, how they impact the world, how they impact uh, movements. That's what we're, uh, we're interested in. You guys have been such great guests and we're so excited to share this episode and share more about True South. Thanks, that was really nice. Thanks so much for having us, Sam. This was, was a pleasure. Yeah, thank you very much. And with that beautiful summary from Evan, that's a wrap on this episode. 
Don't forget to keep up with our guests in the social media accounts that Evan, Salis, and Michael just mentioned. You can also stay in touch with us at Top Artists through Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and our newsletter. If you really love the story and you want to support Antarctica, you can buy the True South flag on flagsforgood.com. We hope you'll tune in again in two weeks when my co-host Jessica Stewart interviews Swoon. She's a super talented artist and we can't wait to share that episode with you. You can always find more great artists and designers making an impact at mymodernmet.com. On our site, you'll find some of the best stories dealing with contemporary art and culture today. We'll see you there.